Hi, I'm Eric Yunkin, and today I'm going to talk about Cluster, my open source multi beam data processing software. As a little background, I've spent most of the last five or six years thinking about processing automation and developing applications like Charlene, Scribble, or Sham, all in use to different degrees throughout the NOAA fleet. About two years ago, I started thinking about all the features that we would be interested in with regards to multi beam data processing. The list is pretty long, as you can see including moving data processing to the cloud, improving on our ability to deploy and share our software, minimizing the current processing headaches, and maximizing our ability to add more platforms or data sources through fully autonomous workflows. After compiling this list and considering the problem for a bit, I decided this was mostly out of reach given our current systems. I believe, and this is purely my opinion, that in order to build this dream system, we would need to start from scratch. Now, when I say start from scratch, I'm not saying you would need to start over from nothing. There's a great deal of existing code and resources that are out there waiting for someone to use in a project like this. Code developed by our group and others, research from universities and subject matter experts in the field that are willing to offer advice and counsel. And I used all of this, as much as I could, to lessen the burden of developing this software. In addition, Cluster is focused on specific data types, those currently in use throughout our fleet, including Kongsberg and Atlantic systems. It can be expanded later, but this is not one of my immediate goals. Now I'm going to show you a few of the key features of Cluster, and afterwards discuss where I see this project going in the future. This is what Cluster looks like when you first run it. Cluster includes all of the common tools you would expect in a multi-beam processing software, a map view, which is powered by QGIS, a project view, a way to view soundings, and several other tools. Note that there are no hookups to other software packages. You can simply download Cluster and run it. I prefer the dark mode and the satellite layer, which is what I'll be using for the rest of this demo. Processing data in Cluster is simple. You simply add data using the file menu or drag in some multi-beam files. This creates a new action that you can see in the top right of the screen. Here, we are going to convert 16 new multi-beam files to this new folder called em 710 3172020 Cluster quickly reads the model number, EM710, and the serial number, 241, and the date associated with each file, which allows it to automatically group the data into the appropriate container before processing. This is a key element in the autonomous nature of Cluster. No user input is needed for conversion. Let's hit Start Process and see what happens. Here we see the converted lines drawn on the screen and a new Run All Processing action in the top right. This is the second and last step in processing data in Cluster. Running this action will complete the processing and leave us with no actions remaining. Processing in Cluster is simply that hitting the Start Process button until there are no remaining actions. If you check Auto, it will automatically press the button on a new action, making Cluster fully autonomous. As an aside, there's another way to add raw data to Cluster through the Monitor tab. Here we can look for new files appearing in directories and automatically add them to Cluster to be processed. This can be used to grab files as you acquire, or search through directories for files to process. Once we have fully processed data, we can do some operations that will seem familiar to you all. We can load a region of the dataset and view the points in two dimensions, here colored by depth. We can also switch to 3D to view them in a three-dimensional space. We can generate grids and view them as a layer in the map view. We've selected a rec in the center here and have it loaded in the points view, showing the corresponding soundings in 3D. With the soundings loaded, we can query and reject them using the mouse. Here we have rejected soundings shown and colored by the status flag of each sounding. But this is just the first step in a processing workflow. As we all know, we oftentimes have to add new data sources after the initial processing. The most obvious example are POSPAC SBETs, which we generate post-acquisition and need to import to replace our real-time navigation and altitude. With Cluster, we can just drag these files in, 
assuming you have the pauseback export log, or you can use a separate dialog to load these files. You can see this generates a new import navigation action. Let's run this action and see what happens next. Now we have a new processing action starting with georeferencing. This is because georeferencing is where the navigation and altitude is used, so the processing must restart at that point. Cluster is able to make decisions based on changes to processing settings or new data sources to determine the correct action to take. Again, the user simply needs to start the action. And the processing is again complete. Let's try a more complicated example. Here we have the cluster patch test tool. Let's say we determined a new pitch angle that we want to apply to this data set. In order to do that, we would need to use the cluster vessel setup tool to edit the existing angle stored for this container. Cluster automatically converts the offsets and angles that you have entered in Sys, which is how it was able to process without asking the user for them. Anyway, once we have changed our angle and saved the results, you'll see that we have a new action. Now we need to run all processing again. The first step in cluster processing is computing the orientation of the vessel using the patch angles and altitude. So an angle change means we need to start over from the beginning. Annoying, but at least a simple process for the user to complete. Let's hit start again. And we are again finished. Now let's look at one last action highlighting a feature that I think is very exciting. Here we have a box showing our project settings, which can be altered on the fly, affecting the data currently loaded in cluster. The default vertical reference in cluster is the waterline, which means you get values relative to the waterline value you have entered in sys. Here we show that I've changed our vertical reference to NOAA mean lower low water. Cluster can connect with a downloaded copy of vDatum and translate directly to mean lower low water without the use of an external separation model grid. This means you no longer have to figure out the ellipse to mean lower low water set value. Cluster is able to drive vDatum to do that directly. All you need to do is ensure that you're within the boundaries of vDatum. I've added a layer that allows you to visualize those boundaries, which you see in the map view as blue squares. It is a little difficult to see at this zoom level. We're currently working on a scheme to develop custom regions, which would allow you to add new regions when you're outside of existing vDatum coverage. After altering the vertical reference, you can see that we have a new georeferencing action. This is where the set value is added in cluster, so we would have to start the processing over at that point. Let's run this action. And we are again finished. One other interesting feature with vDatum processing is that we record a detailed datum description in cluster, showing all sorts of information related to what mean lower low water means in this particular case. This is a bit hard to read, but this description includes the version of vDatum, the vDatum region name, and all sorts of other metadata that creates a much more useful datum description for the end user. There are many more processing actions, but let's switch gears to some of the included tools in Cluster. Here we have the basic plots engine, which is one of my favorite parts of Cluster. Cluster allows you to view and construct plot combinations from all of the raw and processed data sources. As an example, we have the raw and SBET altitude in the top right, showing the 1.5 meter offset between WGS84 and NAD83 in this area, a useful plot for understanding the imported SBET. We also have the different ping modes in the bottom left, showing that this system was only pitch stabilized and in very shallow mode with short CW pulses. The plot descriptions give you the translations for these plots. And finally, an image plot of the travel time and georeference depth, which I include here just to show Cluster's ability to provide educational tools as well as operational ones. For those plots that are more sophisticated, we need to move to the advanced plotting engine. These include an accuracy test for looking at the depth differences between grid and lines over different settings, an extinction test for getting some information about the capabilities of a system in deep water, and the wobble test 
which is based on research done at the University of New Hampshire and provides indicators about particular sources of error. Here we focus mainly on the latency plot, which we commonly use in our sonar acceptance tests. Now one of the first points in our list of goals was cloud processing. Cluster uses Dask for all of its parallel processing, which includes connections to commercial cloud providers like AWS and Azure, and a dashboard allowing you to view statistics related to Cluster as you process. Cluster can also be run from the command line or a Python console, which is a necessary feature if Cluster is to be used in a processing as a service model. I'm currently working with the MBS and ESD team on developing a system for automatically processing data from NCI that is considered too difficult to realistically reprocess with our current systems, given the lack of metadata and supporting files. Cluster can be found on my GitHub, and in the next version of Pydro we expect to release this year. You can go to my releases page and get the latest version of Cluster that will work on any Windows 10 machine. You'll see a link on my GitHub to the documentation for my project, which I've tried to keep up to date as best I can. I also try to make a new video when I release a new major feature. All of these videos are on the 5 Minute Modules channel, including this one by the time you see this. Now I've shown Cluster around to several people by now, inside and outside of our NOAA community. The most common question I get is, what can we do with Cluster? So Cluster is currently in the beta state and requires more testing by users to really ensure that the system is stable and reliable. I am confident in the final answer that you get with Cluster, having compared it to a number of different sources at this point. I've also worked with users around the world now who have used Cluster and provided great feedback. I believe Cluster is ready to be used on our vessels as a second processing solution, initially geared more towards troubleshooting, education, and acceptance testing. I believe Cluster could be an interesting solution for those vessels within NOAA that might not have the expertise to follow our existing workflow. And finally, I think Cluster is well positioned for cloud processing experiments, including the ESD work I mentioned earlier. Now I have a long list of features that I would like to work on, but here's a shorter list including some of the major features that will probably take a while to complete. If you have any questions or suggestions about new features you think would be important, please let me know. Thank you for your time.